Hey, Kobe. Do you know anything about your, uh, my name is Roger. I'm with CompuTrainer. Uh, do you know anything about how your pedaling balances left and right leg? Nope. Well, SpinScan will help you with that. Uh, SpinScan is a 360 degree graph of how you're producing torque through your pedal stroke. So if you go ahead and just spin it up, get it above 30 RPM, you're gonna start seeing this graph come up. Each one of these bars represent a 15 degree movement through your pedal stroke. So that's a 360 degree. And this graph here is exactly the same information, but shown in a kind of a peanut shape. So if you focus without pulling your legs out of your uh, pedals, just focus pushing on your right leg. You'll see that the graph starts showing your right leg. Do it with your left leg. You'll see that the, the torque shifts over to your left leg. So close your eyes and pedal it as smooth as you think you can pedal. Okay, you don't see this, but go ahead and open your eyes. When you were trying to pedal as smooth as you could pedal, you were almost a 60-40 split, producing 60% of your power with your right leg and 40% with your left leg. Spin scan will actually help you find these weak spots in your leg. Any of these areas where the graph goes down to zero, you're not producing any torque at all at that part of the pedal stroke. So what you wanna do is to start working first on your balance. So get that 40-60 split, 50-50. So you're, you'd want to do sing, maybe single leg training on your left leg to increase your strength on your left leg to where over time, I mean, this is not an instantaneous thing. You can make instantaneous changes, but what you want to try to do is improve muscle memory so that we, like when you were closing your eyes, uh, what happened is, is your muscle memory started taking in. You weren't consciously trying to modify your pedal stroke, but you're going to need to consciously modify your pedal stroke to increase the strength on your left leg. Uh, so you use spin scan to make those instantaneous changes, but then over time, as that leg gets stronger, it'll start becoming more a muscle memory thing and you won't have to think about it anymore. The second, go ahead and spin again. The second thing that spin scan will do, it'll show you where you're applying your torque on average through the pedal stroke. So here are these red lines, and these red lines here represent the average torque angle. So this has to do more with not where your peak torque is, but where your average torque is, where your muscles are firing, or your legs are kind of wanting to fire more. And you see that this one is firing actually only about, you know, 110 degrees and this one's almost closer to 120 degrees so not only are you making more power with your right leg it's also firing a little later which might this has got to be the hardest part of changing what you would you wouldn't really be able to consciously modify that um, what you would probably do is improve your leg strength on your left leg and then see where all that starts to fall um, but this really can show uh, things like maybe your seat's too far forward, you're not utilizing your crank arm. But your crank arm is longest when it's at 90 degrees from top to center. So by having your legs fire too late or too soon, you're not utilizing your crank arm to the length of, to, to your best ability. Because your, your crank arm is a lever, okay? So when you're, when you're pushing on it, down here, it's already getting shorter, so you're not really utilizing the crank arm length as well as you could, just, just because of the way your muscles are firing. If you're firing, you're too late. Uh, triathletes, for instance, sit way far forward, so their crank arm length is probably the longest a little further down because they're in front of the pedals. So um, that's why 90 degrees is, is ideal if you were straight right on top of it. But a triathlete being sitting further forward, uh, probably 110 degrees is, is pretty good. It's really important just that they're equal. Um, but like I say, this really is more muscle memory based than even 
the power split is. The power split you can change just by focusing more on putting power under the leg that's the weakest. But average torque angle is kind of more subtle and a lot harder to change. I mean, that's years of uh, the way you learned to pedal when you were five years old uh, has a lot to do with that. But also just geometry. You might have a uh, you, you might need a shim under a pedal or something. This is where uh, a, somebody who does dynamic bike fits, who you'd want to set them up obviously with a good uh, static bike fit, you know, the, just the standard bike fit. But then a dynamic bike fit brings in, which is really the key use of spin scan is doing dynamic bike fits. Any change you make to the bike, to his position, uh, pedal lengths, crank, crank arm lengths, you know, all of that can affect the spin scan graph. So you'd want to go through and make changes to the bike and see whether it improves it. Um, so that's really kind of the bottom line of what spin scan does. Using the individual information of where his weaknesses are, you know, is he putting out, I mean, go ahead and spin up again, Kobe. Um, a stomper, for instance, will just have real high peaks, but very low, these low valleys, he's not producing any torque. That's a dead spot in his pedal stroke. So like right here, right here, right here, right here, he's not producing any torque. The, the momentum of just his legs flying over the pedal is making that. So he's a stomper in this particular case. Think about pulling over the top, pull, pull your legs over the top and push them across the bottom, like you're scraping stuff off your shoe. You see, you start filling in these, these portions of the graph. Think, think like really like uh, not hearing any changes in your pedal stroke. I mean, that's very, if you're, if you're hearing a foo, 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 you're actually stomping. You want a kind of a very smooth, because think about it audibly, you know, you can, you can actually do this even on a regular trainer. Uh, to, to hear whether you're pedaling in circles. So anyway, that's really the basis for how spin scan works. Um, people have used spin scan to uh, fix. I, we've, had, we've had customers that thought they'd it made an improvement after a surgery and had worked so long on fixing that, still thinking they hadn't really improved, get on spin scan and that leg is like twice as strong as the other leg. I mean, they 80, 30, you know, 80, 20 splits. And I mean, it's just an amazing thing where your brain thinks you still have so much more work to do, but SpinScan has actually proven they've, they've actually gone the other direction. So this is proprietary uh, to CompuTrainer and Velotron. Uh, the only way that we can do this is utilizing the unique advantage that we have of of using, using rider inertia. Rider inertia uses your body weight and accelerates that in real time, 100 times a second. You can't do spin scan if you don't have that fast a, a, a feedback loop. So CompuTrainer is the only comp, you know, trainer that does that fast a feedback between what you're doing in real time and the processing of it. So yeah, CompuTrainer is the only way that you're gonna get spin scan.